everybody. I got a request for the heart-shaped scoring pattern, the one that is um, wrapped in twine. So it's not only is the bread is shaped, but then the pattern, on, the scoring pattern on top is kind of like a little heart, upside down hearts. So I'm gonna do that for you today, I'll show you how to do it. Um, I get a million questions about my dining room table too. It is a drop leaf table, like out of the 70s that I picked up and um, painted and just scored, roughed it up and scrubbed on it and it's turned into this, what it is today and I, I absolutely love it. I, I made a, like a little tic-tac pattern on it and painted some rocks and the kids for, and their friends love to play on it. So this particular loaf has been in the refrigerator um, for over 24 hours. It, um, it, when I, before I shaped it, I did the poke test and when I poked my finger into it, you gently poke your finger into it. If it springs all the way back out, it's not ready to do this kind of a loaf yet. If it springs a little bit back out, but doesn't totally refill the hole that you've poked, then it's ready for, for a loaf like this. If it, if it pops all the way out, it's going to be an exploding loaf. Um, which is really cool for an ear, but not super cool for a loaf like this. So my parchment paper, I've baked on this parchment paper multiple times, so you guys know that I reuse my parchment paper. Someone said to me the other day, um, I have read the box of the parchment paper and it's only good for up to 450 degrees. And I was like, uh, I'm gonna burn my house down. <laughs> I've never read the bottom or the the box of the parchment paper, so I never even thought about it. Like, am I gonna burn my house down? And then I thought, eh, I haven't done it yet. So it's not like I leave the house when I'm baking. So I don't know if I would recommend to use the parchment paper. I don't know what else other people are using, but I forgot to wrap this in the twine before I pulled it off. <laughs> Okay, let's redo that. If that happens to you, I'll show you what to do. Just put your, put it back on your towel, put your basket back over it, and try to very gently poke it back in. See, mine's not gonna go all the way in. That's okay. Just try not to deflate it. That's the biggest. So, I'm gonna get my kitchen twine here. Oh, my scissors are dandy. That is hilarious. So I've done that a couple of times where I'm like, oh yeah, I'm gonna do the pumpkin shaped loaf or this one, the star shaped loaf or whatever. And then, oops, I, I'm such a creature of habit. I just turn it out, boop, and I forgot to put my strings on it. So it's fine. You just try your best not to deflate it because that's where you're gonna have issues. Okay, so now, here goes my parchment paper that may or may not burn my house down. Let's go super gently, turn it out. There we go. That's fine. Okay, so now I've got these strings. You can do as few or as many of these as you want to. Dust your top off. This top's not very uh, dusty, so I'm not gonna worry about that a ton. And then all-purpose flour is what I use. Um, I've talked about lots of people use um, rice flour, and I do not like the texture of rice flour. It is, to me, it's really gritty, and I don't, I don't prefer that. So white flour, it is. One of my friends had an issue with her flower um, like disappearing off the top and I think that it's possibly because um, because everybody's got a different um, stove, everybody's got a different Dutch oven, um, so your, your methods are going to have to change depending on what you're doing, where you live. Even the recipe that you use is, is gonna be different because the humidity is different, the, everything, you know. So I told her to crack her Dutch oven just a little bit and see if that helps keep the tops white um, to get some of that um, 
steam out of the oven. I know that we all love steam in our Dutch oven because it helps the bread stay moist and rise better, but too much steam is gonna give you a gross, dense loaf that's like gummy in the middle. And nobody likes that. Well, somebody might, but it's not what she was going for, so. Low scissors. So I'm just tying these all in square knots up on top. Square knot is a just an overhand knot that goes both directions, one on top of the next. So you'll want to do the one one this way and then one this way. I don't know if that makes sense, but. I think probably everybody knows what a square knot is. If you don't, I bet there's a YouTube that talks all about knots. Actually, I know there is because my husband loves knots. So, so this is my little treasure jar. I am going to just, this is a chopstick that I've cut the end off of and, and I'm just gonna like use it to mark out. You can use whatever you want. So when I do these hearts, I make sure that this point right here is very prominent otherwise it's just going to look like a circle so when it opens up everything relaxes a little bit and looks less um, prominent and i'm going to do this on all of my sides here just gives me a little bit of a uh, idea of what i'm going to do so they're all about the same size. Once you make these cuts in the dough, you can't fix them. They, they don't get glued back together. And they, it just, it is what it is. It's kind of like a Bob Ross painting. You can try to fix it. It's a like, happy accident. But if you do this, then it kind of prevents some, some of the accidents. My dental floss, I'm not gonna use that today. But I keep everything all together. This is my long. It is, <laughs> everyone asks me about this thing and it's so bad. It's uh, it's kind of a train wreck. All it is is two pieces of a wood shim that I have stuck a, a, a shaving razor in between and then a nut and bolt that screw them together. So I like it because it's tiny. It costs me literally nothing. And, um, and a lot of my blade sticks out and I see a lot of the uh, loms where the blade just sticks out a tiny bit like that. And I really like to be able to get in there if I want to. So that's why I like this. Got a little fuzzy from my kitchen twine. This kitchen twine I bought at my local hardware store. It has like a kitchen department in it. Um, it's like Ace Hardware with the kitchen department. So as far as how deep I'm going, I'm, I'm sticking it into this little nodule right here. So it is on an angle, so it'll go down pretty much like, I don't know if you can see that, like that much. The deeper your cuts are, the more spread you're gonna get. So if you want them all to be pretty symmetrical, you need to cut with a symmetrical depth. I just started selling my bread. Um, like my town, I think the population is like, oh, now that I say that, I can't remember. I think it's like less than 5,000 people. We have one stoplight. It's the cutest little town ever. And we, we have this little baby farmer's market. And when I posted that I had sourdough for sale, everybody was like, go to the farmer's market because everybody's trying to get it started up. But as I'm just like cooking in my kitchen, I, I can only bake so many loaves. So I was like, I don't know, maybe, maybe, but maybe not. So I'm just gonna go inside these with another, I know it's kind of hard to see with this angle. Another little baby heart. I 
I could draw this one on again with that chopstick, but it's, it's all right. I kind of have the idea of the outline already from the big heart. So then I'm just going to uh, go in with the those little wheat things that everybody loves. They open up so nicely and look so pretty. And really it's just whatever you want it to look like. So we'll do two. What are some of the questions that people have been asking me? Um, how do I score 80% hydration sourdough? If you build up enough gluten structure in your sourdough, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. See how tall it is still? Because I have a lot of gluten structure in there. I do a lot of stretch and folds. Um, actually, I prefer coil folds. My my full recipe is on my channel, if you want to find that. Um, it's, it's pretty much just, it's going to depend on, again, the temperature in your house, what kind of flour you're using. When I switched flour brands, I had to switch up my recipe a little. I had to add a little bit more water. So I went from like a 79.9% hydration to like an 85% hydration just to get the same texture as I had before. It's not looser, it's just a different brand of flour and it, uh, it acted differently. So you really have to, recipes are, are just a suggestion really when it comes to sourdough making. You just have to go by feel, by texture. A lot of cooking is that way. You just have to do what feels right to you, what you like. And like I said, this particular dough, this has been in the refrigerator for, um, for over 24 hours. I shaped this, uh, on Monday and this Wednesday. So it sat in there all day yesterday. Okay, so there she is. I, I take my time when I cut. I, I don't rush and put it in the, the oven. You know, I, it takes me about 10 minutes per loaf to cut. I can even go around and like perfect these little bits where it didn't cut quite as much. That's it. I'm gonna put all my stuff back in my little jar so it doesn't get anybody hurt. But uh, yeah, you can do this particular wrap with this twine with so many different, um, different cuts. Um, I'll show you some pictures of stuff that I've done with this same wrap. Uh, I've done more strings. I've done less. I've done five is where you you cut one of them off, like tie them on the back with a knot. And then, so say I only wanted five and I didn't want six, then I would just cut this one off and put it in the back. And then I would have five or three or nine or whatever. You don't have to have an even number. But you can make a star. I made a star one time. Um, yeah, you just have fun with it. It's it, it kind of works no matter what you do. This kitchen twine is made for, for um, cooking meat, so it doesn't burn. I haven't had a problem with it burning at least. I shouldn't say that it doesn't, but uh, if you get the right stuff, it's made to go in the oven, so. Okay, that's enough chowder for me. I'm gonna get this guy in the oven and I'll, I'll show you what it looks like. Thanks for watching, guys. And holler at me if you have any questions about anything I've done, if you want to see anything in the future, and um, uh, yeah, if subscribe if you want to see more stuff and uh, new things. So I'm always doing new stuff. So give me ideas. I'm always looking for new things to do.